I, I love this prologue, uh, but there's so much mystery that is contained in the Gospel of John, and especially in this hymn that at one time many years ago was sung. What does it mean to have the Word of God embodied in a person? What does it mean for the light of the world to become a child? What does it mean for God to become flesh and dwell among us? It's really the thing that makes Christianity so strange to all the other religions of the world. It's deeply problematic. If we were Jewish... And this is throughout our Old Testament. One of the great symbols of the Jewish faith is the Ark of the Covenant, right? It actually looks really similar to the thing in the Indiana Jones movie. And it's really a giant chair. It's a beautiful gold empty seat called the mercy seat. And that's where God is supposed to sit. And so all the great armies of Israel would gather. And at the head of the army would be this empty seat where God goes. Because one cannot describe what God looks like in any image that is adequate, and it might even be blasphemy to try to do that, right? And when God tries to communicate, he communicates through burning bushes or or angels, messengers, uh, different, uh, uh, a still small voice. There's all of these ways that God communicates. Uh, But we never see the face of God. And in the Muslim faith, we find the same thing. We find if you go into a mosque, there's beautiful calligraphy adorning every wall, but there's no image of God. Because there's a great fear that if you have images of God, you might worship them. And there's no image of Muhammad, of course, anywhere to be found for the same reason. And yet, for us to be Christian in this place, it's almost impossible to imagine our faith without seeing the manger. And Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the face of baby Jesus. It's impossible to imagine being Christian without having the image of Jesus walking in water, without the feeding of the 5,000, praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, all the interactions with his apostles, Jesus on the cross, Jesus visiting Mary as she weeps at the tomb. Our religion is filled with images of God. We are asked to see the face of God over and over And it all begins this night, when God becomes flesh and dwells in our midst as a person with a face and a life, with a mother and a father, a person who talked in a particular way, loved particular people, looked a certain way. And because God became flesh, we can describe God with pictures. Because Jesus walked around and did stuff. We can make sacred art that draws us closer to God. We can write songs where we imagine what the word of God sounds like. And perhaps most profoundly, we can try to live holy lives as human beings on earth Because when God became a person, he lived a holy life. And God said to us that loving people was the best thing that he did on earth. And so we have an opportunity to experience that great thing as well. For us, meals can become sacred Gathering together, like we are this evening, can be holy. Relationships, friendships, marriages can show us what God looks like. We can live holy lives by seeing the face of God in each other. And God calls us to do that. We're not called to search the stars to find a glimpse of God somewhere. 
We're called to look around us. In this space, we can see a cross. We might catch a glimpse of the face of God in a human life. And God loves us, not our souls. God isn't waiting for us one day to die and shed our icky bodies so that we can be beautiful souls with little wings and fly up to heaven. God loves us right now. God loves you in your body just as God loved his son Jesus and God became one of us and dwelled in our midst. In our living, we can live as God lived. And in our dying, we can die as did the Lord. Finally, redeemed, not to death, but eternal life. In church, every, every week we say that we are saved through Christ, but I'm not sure that we're fully aware of how powerful it is that God loves us right now in this moment. That God is not waiting for us to transform, but God loves you right now, in this time and in this place. And you have an opportunity when you feel the love of God and when you see the love of God in the face of one another to encounter something sacred and profound that is as profound as any mystery we might find in the universe. How powerful is it that God loves us and God lived with us and ate and drank with us and sees meals and gatherings and friends and marriages and family as sacred and holy and something that is of God. And something is changing in our world that's quite powerful and profound. There's a long period of time in our history where we saw God in the face of human beings, and we saw nature as kind of this sinister thing that was trying trying to kill us. There's lots of diseases, there's lots of wolves and lions and bulls of Bashan, and they're going to come after us. And we are the face of God amidst chaos and doom. But something's happened to us, right? Every one of us in this room is aware of the world that we live in and how vulnerable we are. The forests, the animals, a lot of us love creation in ways that we haven't in a very long time. We're claiming more and more to see the face of God, not just in one another, but in our world and in our creation. And so more and more often we're saying as a church that God did not just redeem people, God redeemed life. That there's something sacred about the life of this world. That life can be holy. And all that begins with the incarnation. And God becomes alive in the way that we are alive and makes that life holy and sacred. So what does it mean that the word of God became embodied in a person? It means that God loves us profoundly, loves us right now, in this place, just as we are. God loves us profoundly, and we celebrate that this Christmas evening. Amen.